Welcome to John Redman, Power of Attorney, a special webcast with CPA Tom South. We're continuing our discussion that we've had on our show, just about a couple of special issues that we didn't get to cover on the show. Um, Tom, thanks for this extended interview. Let's move right on to the very first topic. Um, the fiscal cliff, we've been hearing all about the fiscal cliff with Barack Obama debating with Congress. How does the fiscal cliff relate to personal income taxes, taxes in general? Well, number one, it was a, it's a shorthand issue that, that dictates the condition that the, or the conundrum that the federal government got itself in with regards to spending and revenue issues. Uh, it, it's not a cliff at all. It was they had to pass certain tax laws in order to raise revenue or cut spending, which they did on January 1st, 2013. They had 507 days before that to work on it, and but they waited to the very last minute. They had from August 2011 to work on the fiscal cliff, and they postponed it to the very bitter end. The fiscal cliff is good. It's good news to some extent. It does correct some of the issues that, that we have. The, the government had three possible issues that they could really look at with regards to the fiscal cliff, and they chose the less painful, again, to not take all the corrective action necessary. So they reached some sort of a compromise to uh, avoid going over the fiscal cliff. Yes. Well, even though it really was at a cliff. <laughs> And um, and describe for us what that compromise was and how it relates well, to taxes. Well, the, the compromise specifically was to raise revenue first, which they did. They went from a, a high income uh, taxpayers rate of thirty five to thirty nine point six percent. And that high income define what what the cutoff for high income is. Uh, married, uh, uh, it's broken down by by individuals. It's married couples earning three hundred and fifty uh, four hundred fifty thousand dollars, single taxpayers earning four hundred thousand dollars. And those in, those amounts are indexed for inflation on a per year basis. Okay. So those are, those, if you remember the initial discussions, was any was any taxpayer earning over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? This was a compromise uh, on the congressional level to really help the individuals and still raise revenue. The 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 next biggest issue that happened was the long term capital gains rate. Specifically, if you, as you might remember, they were fifteen percent across the board. Again, the income limitations raised it from fifteen to twenty percent on those same high income tax rate. Okay, and payers. just again, just so everybody stays on the same page with us, define what is a capital gain. A capital gain is when you hold an asset, a marketable security, specifically or stock, uh, a period of over one year. One year and one day is considered a capital gain is taxed at a special rate called the capital gains tax rate. If you hold it one less than one year, it's taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. Right. So uh, it could be stocks, bonds, can it be real estate? It That's can be capital. real estate. That's capital. And and it increases in value over that time period. Correct. And that's a gain. A gain. And it that gain is income to you and it's taxed at a a different rate? It is taxed at a different rate. Okay. In order to calculate capital gains, you buy a piece of real estate for $100,000, you sell it for th uh, $300,000 as a $200,000 capital gain, and you pay the capital applicable capital gains rate on the $200,000. Okay. The 100 is the rec recapture of your basis. Okay. Is it the selling of the capital, or is it just the increase in value? Whether or not It's only it? the selling. You have okay. to dispose of an asset. Thank you for explaining that. All right, and I think I interrupted you. No, Continue. No, you have to actually dispose of the asset in order to pay the capital gains and recognize the capital gain. Holding the asset and appreciation has no income tax effect at all. Okay. Uh, what about losses? What if your uh, capital loses value? You can actually have capital losses. Uh, a capital loss is treated differently. A capital loss can help help you in one of two ways. It can out offset capital gains. Let's take, for instance, the same $300,000 piece of real estate that you sold and you recognize a $200,000 capital gain. You, and you also have a $200,000 capital loss. The two will net out and you will pay no tax on okay. either the gain or get a tax benefit from the loss. They net out to zero. But it, let's say that you, have a $200,000 capital loss and no capital gains to offset that capital loss. You're limited by tax law to a cap to a loss on a per year basis of $3,000. Wow. And the rest is carried forward. Okay. To offset future income or future capital gains. But um uh, well, I think I, I think I understand that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, does that cover the fiscal cliff yes. discussion? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, change topics. What happens to the people who they simply they put their head in the sand like the old proverbial ostrich, and they they got 
they made income. They got pay from one source or another. Mm -hmm. Self-employed, they got paychecks, and they either don't file income taxes at all, or income tax returns, or they file income tax returns, but they didn't pay uh, what they should have paid in income uh, taxes. Um, tell us what their situation is. Well, it's, it's not a, a no-win situation for the individual taxpayer. We advise taxpayers to file the returns for some, first and foremost. Get, a, get them filed with Internal Revenue Service and have the statute of limitations start to run on those tax returns. Statute of limitation does not run until the tax returns are filed. If you And for everybody, statute of limitations is what we also call a prescriptive, a prescription period. and legal. And meaning if the government decides they don't want to mess with you and 10 years runs, after you filed your tax return, mm -hmm. after 10 years, too late to go after you. It's too late to go after you, correct. If you never file that tax return when you should have, the clock doesn't start ticking. That 10-year time period correct. doesn't start to Continues tick. to run. If you owe money and after you filed your tax returns for back years, there's a couple of issues that we can work with specifically. The first and foremost is to get the uh, tax returns filed, get the assessment from the Internal Revenue Service, a bill as to what you actually owe. Uh, ask for abatement of the penalties and interest based on a reasonable yeah. cause. Now, we didn't get into penalties and interest. Penalties and interest can be astounding. Substantial, yes. Give us an example. Suppose, let's suppose you make, you made $50,000, and for whatever reason, people, these are hard times. Mm -hmm. People are worried about losing their homes because they can't pay the mortgage. They simply don't pay the 5000 they owed in taxes. Mm -hmm. What kind of penalties and interest if they're too late, two years late, paying their five thousand? And well, they the, it's broken down into three component pieces. Specifically, the interest charge, which mm -hmm. is a statutory amount charged by the federal government. That the government will never abate that. Then there's a failure to file penalty for not filing the tax return on a timely basis and a mm -hmm. failure to pay penalty. Those are the two issues that we have, and those are percentages of, of the uh, amount of taxes owed. So those are two that we've had the most success in mm -hmm. getting abated over the years. But the issue is, why did not you file the tax return? And it has health, uh, divorce, so loss control. They might be a little bit sympathetic if you can give some reasonable explanation yeah. for why you were late. Uh, natural disaster. I didn't have the money. I had this financial medical catastrophe uh, that took all the money. Um, but the penalties can 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 double, triple, quadruple what you owe because the penalties can can go high, and then the interest on that can be very high. Is that correct? Correct. That's right. The penalties continue to run until the tax is paid in full. And then, and then, what, if I'm understanding you, um, you may have some wiggle room to negotiate with the IRS about yes. um, either getting rid of some of the penalties or all of them, depending on the situation and the reasons you can provide, and also on some of the interest or all of the interest? None of the interest. None of the interest. Very, very difficult to get the Internal Revenue okay. Service without a the, uh, tremendous hardship okay. to get the in interest abated. So related point, we are bombarded with TV commercials that say, uh, I owed the IRS $100,000 and I went to see this company. These are national companies, they're not based here. And they reduced them down to $10,000. All I had to do was call and yada, yada, yada. Do you have an opinion about whether or not these these promises of miraculous effects or uh, uh, results are uh, are justified? It must be a lucrative business, <laughs> number one, because and it shows the number of people that may be in tax uh, tax trouble owing back taxes, and we have dealt in several of those cases specifically. I don't have a high regard. I, the cases that our firm entertains specifically, we receive from other national tax firms, <clears throat> and they only write a letter. <coughs> me collect a fee and you may never hear from them again right. so it's kind of snake oil salesman it, it is, is my impression. It, it, that's my impression specifically and, and I have first-hand knowledge of it okay um, we're really running short on time um, uh, bankruptcy um, a lot of people have the impression that if I get in really big trouble and I have all this debt from all different kinds of sources bankruptcy is my uh, parachute I can just jump pull the parachute, bankruptcy parachute, and I won't owe anybody anything. Doesn't really work with uh, taxes, does it? It does not. Consumer debt is totally separate and apart from the taxes you owe the Internal Revenue Service because the Internal Revenue Service will file a lien against your property 
that you may own and they're going to be paid at the time you may sell that property. Right. And the lien is to protect the Internal Revenue Services interest. So whatever you owe in taxes, subject to whatever a good CPA or even a tax attorney can mm -hmm. do to help uh, minimize that, uh, bankruptcy is no, no help. It's not a great help. The, the help, when you do file bankruptcy, it rolls you into another category for, versus just asking for abatement of some of the penalties, mm -hmm. penalties and interest. It may roll you into the offer and compromise okay. category. Okay. So it may be a tool. It's a, very, it's a good tool where you can take and state all of your assets and liabilities that you have and show that over a 48-month period, you're not going to be able to pay back the Internal Revenue Service, so they may take a, less, a lesser amount, but there's a very rigid procedure that the Internal Revenue Service has to, uh, to grant the offer and compromise. Right. And on that note, as my understanding is bankruptcy won't help you get out of child support debt either. It will not. Okay. Well, we've covered a lot of ground. I wish we had two, three, Me four too. more hours to talk about this stuff. But um, for those people who have tax issues and questions, if you're uh, low income and you have simple taxes, uh, go to Loyola Law School or Tulane Law School. Maybe they can help you. I surely recommend you do it instead of trying to do it yourself. Uh, if you have other tax issues, uh, go see a CPA or a tax attorney. Go to my website for more information. We're going to post information on there. Uh, actually, you should be at my website uh, looking at this video if you're not on YouTube. And uh, certainly uh, contact my office if you have any other questions. Uh, Mr. Tom South, CPA, you've been an excellent, Thank excellent you, guest. I surely pleasure. learned a lot. I hope you, our guests, have learned something too. Uh, please come visit us on our show and um, stay with us every week for more topics. Thank you for being with us.